Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about proving triangle congruence. We're going to talk about a couple of specific methods, the angle side angle method and the angle angle side method. Now before we get into proving triangle congruence, I want you to understand what congruent is and what similar is. So when we talk about congruent, we're talking about two shapes that are the same size and shape, or two polygons that are the same size and shape. Uh, when we talk about similar, which we'll be dealing with in a later unit, we're talking about the same shape only. So they're going to be different size, either bigger or smaller, but they're going to have the same shape. So I kind of want you to understand when we're talking about congruent shapes, then we need a combination of side lengths and a combination of, of angles. We can't just rely on angles in this case because the angles are what produce the shape. OK, when we have similar figures that are different sizes, the angles are still going to all be the same. So we can't just rely on angles alone. We have to have some information about the side lengths. And so if we don't have all of the side lengths, for instance, in, a, in these triangles, then we have to rely on a combination of both angles and side lengths then. And so that brings us to the two methods that we're going to be talking about today, the angle side angle method and the angle angle side method. And so in, in both of these, what we have are uh, two pairs of corresponding angles that we know are congruent and we have one pair of corresponding sides that we know are congruent in both of the shapes. Um, it's just a matter of where those are located. So with angle side angle then, we've got two consecutive angles that are congruent and the side that's connecting those two angles is also congruent. Notice that the side is in between the two angles. That's why we call this angle side angle. When we're dealing with angle angle side then we've still got two sets of uh, corresponding congruent angles and we still have one uh, pair of congruent sides but notice how the pair of congruent sides is now not between the two angles uh, that we have or not connecting to two angles it's one of the other sides that's opposite of the uh, the angles that we know are congruent so that's why we put the side on the outside of the angle angle. So that's why this is considered angle angle side. Again, it's just the order of the two. It's all that really matters. Again, with angle side angle, notice that the side is in between the two angles. So when we look at the, the, the triangle, we can put it in that particular order. And when we look at uh, angle side or angle angle side, sorry, again, the corresponding side that we know is congruent is not the one connecting the two angles it's one of the opposite side uh, sides and that's why we put the side at the end of the name so that is the difference between angle side angle and angle